Thanks for your last response, Tony. We're really making progress in our list of disputed issues, bringing us down to just one. Tony has now dropped his claim that methane is not a significant greenhouse gas after I gave facts and figures showing that it is and called on him to cite a single study that shows otherwise. And he's dropped his claim that I blew over Al Gore's assertion about CO2 correlation after I showed that I had criticised it. In addition, he couldn't cite a single study by any of the many scientists he claimed poked holes in a paper by Shakun et al., So the one issue he's still trying to defend is his claim that positive feedback can't contribute to deglaciation and his belief that this would have led to runaway warming and boiling oceans. Before I respond to that, because it won't take long, let me start with something a little more harmonious. I'm delighted that Tony now agrees with the accepted definition of an argument from authority. As I explained in my last video, it doesn't refer to peer-reviewed studies because these are the building blocks of science. An argument from authority, also known as an appeal to authority, is claiming that just because a scientist or some other authority gives an opinion, it must therefore be true. Tony now agrees. The process of simply quoting expert opinion is an appeal to authority. And I'm sure Tony would also agree that if quoting the opinion of an authority is bad, then quoting the opinion of someone who isn't an authority, like me or Tony, is even worse. I've been saying the same thing in my videos for the last 12 years. Here are some clips. Quoting what experts say in television interviews or blogs or even congressional inquiries is called an argument from authority. What matters is not what these contrarians assert in blogs and TV interviews. What matters is the evidence they publish in scientific papers supporting those assertions. Simply listing names and appealing to authority, let alone a phony authority, is not how science is done. This is why I never report something as science on the basis that a scientist says it is. But people who watch Tony Heller's last video will swear blind that I must do, because Tony said I did. Journalists like Potholer love to make appeals to authority. Potholer frequently points out in his videos that professional scientists said this, or professional scientists said that. I don't use the phrase professional scientists said, firstly because not all professional scientists are researchers, and what matters is research because that's how science is done. Secondly, because it doesn't matter what scientists say, as Tony and I both agree. What matters is what's been published in peer-reviewed studies. So I always quote these studies. Anytime you hear the words researchers say or the authors say in my videos, it's always referring to what they say in a peer-reviewed study. Tony doesn't show any video clips to support his claim, of course, but because we both have time to fact-check in this debate and cite our sources, I can. So here's where I referenced researchers in my last video. The authors measured oxygen isotopes in the air bubbles trapped in the ice. The authors say exactly the same thing as the Indiana University website. What may explain it, say the authors, from this new data, researchers have calculated that change. They show their figures, they cite their sources, but what they found is that even if, as they explain in the study, they're measuring... Finding video evidence like this is why a fact-checking format is crucial in any science debate and why Tony wants to end it. Every time he makes a claim, however trivial, it's very easy to fact-check and show that he's got it wrong. So to make Tony's claim accurate, he should have said... Potola frequently points on his videos that peer-reviewed studies said this or peer-reviewed studies said that. And that would be correct, because that is exactly how science is done. And that brings us to Tony's last remaining issue. He's already said in two previous videos that because the role of positive feedback in deglaciations doesn't make any sense to him, he doesn't accept it. And his third video simply repeats that. So now we're going to look at the science of feedback and see why that doesn't make any sense. We're all familiar with audio feedback. Tony William. even gives the same example of audio feedback that I've already explained is wrong. With a gain of greater than one, the sound is coming out of the speaker, feeding back into the microphone, getting louder, keeps going around this loop and gets louder and louder and louder. But as I've explained twice now, the Earth has a mechanism for slowing down the rate of warming once the initial forcing stops. As it gets warmer, the Earth radiates more heat. 
So the amount of outgoing energy rises until it matches the amount of incoming energy and the temperature stabilizes at the equilibrium temperature. There's no such mechanism in Tony's audio feedback example, which is why you get runaway feedback there, but not in the Earth's energy system. Secondly, as Tony himself admits, the feedback of the audio system has a gain of greater than one. That's not the case with the Earth. This is a crucial difference, because, as I explained, once the initial forcing stops, Earth's temperature feedback dampens down over time. That doesn't happen with audio feedback. Thirdly, in the case of glacial cycles, changes in the Earth's tilt and orbit work against runaway warming. As I explained, they eventually send the climate out of an interglacial and back into another glaciation. No such cycles exist that reverse audio feedback. So now let's discuss the consequences of Potholer's theory. But as I've repeatedly shown, I'm not explaining my theories here. These are measurements and calculations published in peer-reviewed scientific papers. Of course, Tony should know this by now, because I've said not my theory mate so many times that some people want to make it a meme. I've shown these papers and cited them in the video description. Insisting that it's my theory is a great debating tactic, because of course it means Tony can avoid reading these studies and he doesn't feel he has to rebut them. But after three videos, trying to pretend that all I'm doing is cobbling together my own theory is wearing a little thin. The difference between my explanation and Tony's is that you don't have to take my word for any of this. It's so well understood that it's been established physics for four decades and is laid out very clearly in papers that I've cited. Tony doesn't suggest that I've misrepresented or misunderstood these studies and anyone is free to read them and check. By contrast, Tony hasn't provided anything except an appeal to his own authority or in this case a lack of authority. The argument I hear from a lot of his subscribers is, well, Tony's got a geology degree. Well, I've got a geology degree too. It doesn't make me an expert on the Earth's energy systems. And even if both of us were experts in this, we've already agreed that citing expert opinion is an appeal to authority. This isn't an arts debate where we're debating our personal opinions. This is science. Tony can't just decide that the Earth's feedback system is greater than the forcing because that's his opinion. He has to show where this has been measured and calculated. And he needs to cite scientific studies that support his belief that these feedbacks ought to lead to runaway warming and boiling oceans. I've asked twice now. So I'm hoping third time lucky.